So hello and welcome everybody. My name is Melissa Robronia. I am a heart healer. And today we have a very special guest, Arne Ronson, who is originally from Sweden, but now lives in Costa Rica, doing some wonderful work, um, unlimited breath and creative questioning. So welcome Arne. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, my pleasure. So you and I originally met through a rebirthing Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I think I created like many years ago and then um, somebody else took over. So I noticed that you were posting about your workshops and also a PDF. And we had a bit of an exchange around natural breathing, which, uh, which I loved and, and, that's why I wanted to interview you. So here we are. So, oh, great. I love it too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I read on your um, website that you were a Buddhist monk for five years. I was a Tibet, Tibetan Buddhist monk for five years, yes. Amazing. So what was that like? I feel extremely fortunate and uh, that got me grounded into if you call it spirituality or common sense living, spiritual living. And uh, so it, it, I got that foundation, which is now permeating uh, everything I'm doing, uh, even the uh, unlimited breath. So, but it's all common sense. You can call it Buddhist or common sense. To me, it's the it's same thing, and especially the Tibetan aspects of it. So it's, it's with me every day, even today. Beautiful. And the way... But yeah, the way it is expressed through me is uh, I feel like I can reach a lot more people not being in a monk or, you know, different than looking like somebody has to look up to me or anything like that. So uh, I, I can do a lot better work uh, in just being a normal person, but it's still that quality that is what I'm passionate about. Wonderful. So, and so tell me how, um, and what's your connection to rebirthing? Well, 1982, long time ago, almost like another past life, it feels like in this life, uh, I connected with uh, Sondra Ray, uh, one of my main teachers in rebirthing and in Sweden. And I took all the workshops there and, um, and became a practitioner and wanted to take more workshops. So the next most advanced workshop in the world was in New York City. So I moved to New York for a year to study even more and open a practice there. Moved on to Connecticut and had a practice there and working, uh, starting to teach internationally and been doing that since 87 and uh, just love this work. It, uh, <laughs> first the work loved me yeah. and me on this path, and now I love the work too, so now we love each other. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So you are the founder, teacher, and practitioner of unlimited breath. That is so, correct. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what that is and what that means. Well, it's, uh, the, what I learned in the beginning about rebirthing, I love that. And uh, uh, most of it is. Uh, I still apply and then over the years uh, having lots of clients and uh, workshops around uh, it, um, I saw that some of my colleagues they started to add things to it and, and make it more like one lady she's a musician really good musician so she got some music into it and this and that and uh, the breath itself is always powerful. No matter what you do with the breath, everybody's going to be happy. But then in, in my particular case, I have a passion for uprooting and cleaning up the subconsciousness so we can be the spiritual beings that we are. And in order to do that, that is the natural breathing. that uh, It works for that. So that's why I, got, I like that. And to define that, what I'm doing specifically, uh, I changed the name from rebirthing to unlimited breath. And then also I've learned to express it 
uh, in a certain way. Uh, certain concepts, natural breathing, the affirmation world, which is a big part of the rebirthing, the other le uh, leg of rebirthing. Uh, uh, that is a gift I received that uh, uh, affirmations actually came from the question. You know, how, how can I be more, uh, I, I want to be, my clients come to me and say, I want to be more successful. And uh, in the beginning, the in the 90s, I was like, yeah, how can you be more successful? Let's do an affirmation. Uh, you are now more successful. And then I just realized, wow, that was, the reason I came up with the affirmation is because I asked the question first. And if I didn't stick with the one answer, can I be successful? Now, a lot, a lot of answers came. So I, I found out that it, it was easier to, uh, it, it's more profound to go to the question. It's easier, faster, and more um, permanent. Mm -hmm. So that, that's something that uh, basically only uh, everybody's welcome to use it, but uh, I came up with that in year 2000, actually, and just love it. So we have two steps in the animated breath. One is the breathing, and one is the the consciousness, what we do with things. Wonderful. So, um, so tell us a little bit about, I, I guess if you were to show us the breath, you have a 20 second method. What does that look like? Yeah, I, I call that a breathing snack, mm -hmm. but because uh, I, it's natural breathing and we can do it in two ways, breathing snack, which is just a refresher, I'm feeling drowsy, I want to feel a little healthier, good, you do 20 seconds of that. But if you want to clean out your subconsciousness and really meet yourself on a more profound level, we do full sessions of that. But the method is the same, but it's just longer time. So with the, with the natural breathing, the, the breathing stack, there are five characters Characteristics that are defined in that, but they are natural because they are natural. <laughs> if you watch your breathing, what happens to it when you yawn, sigh, laugh, uh, jog, ex exert yourself, have an emotion? All those times we go into the, the movement or the emotion, we go into it, one of those uh, uh, experiences, and the breathing changes. And if usually we are unaware of that, and even in movies now, is they know how to do that breathing, but it's always connected with some disaster. Oh my God! Look, they're breathing like that. That must not be good. When it's really natural breathing. So, so what I'm doing is not actually uh, making anything new. I'm just getting in, allowing the body, allowing the person, myself, to get out of the way. When I yawn, I get out of the way. When I get an, allow an emotion, I get out of the way. And the breathing takes over. So to, to jump start, to consciously choose to do these five breathing basics, we already take us on that journey and we jump start and we get on, onto it. And what they are, there are five of them. Uh, uh, the first one is to be aware. If you're not aware, you don't have an experience, you don't know if anything happened. So you, you got to live your life, not as a monitor like a robot who can pick up uh, sights or uh, sound and even respond to it. But there is no experiencer there. So we're going to be the experiencer and, <coughs> and, and re not like hypnosis, like really being there. And when we fall asleep, we do the five breathing basics, but we do n we're not aware. So we, it, we need to have the five of them present at the same time for it, it to work uh, in the way uh, into the subconsciousness and on a deeper level. So be aware. Second one is to breathe into the chest. Well, the lungs are in the chest and the emotions are in the chest. The ribs are, it's not an armor. It, it actually is supposed to move when we, and it moves when you, uh, uh, when you laugh, when you're happy, you know, it's, it's like, ah, you know, 
Yeah. That's not moving. It moves there, not your belly. Belly will not move when you sigh. You cannot sigh in your belly. Yeah. You, you cannot sprint or jog in your belly. It always happens. It comes up to here. And the lungs are here. Makes sense that probably we should be breathing up here if we breathe naturally. Not if we're a singer, if we have other, you know, I want to, I want peace, I want harmony, I want to relax. Well, then uh, then maybe you need to like uh, suppress your breathing a little bit. Uh, my goal is to make people more alive, more passionate, more um, getting into their lives. And, and so it's not necessarily uh, relaxed or peaceful, it's, it's passion. I'm so excited about being alive. Woohoo, here I come. You know, I can stop myself. I'm so happy. That is kind of more, I think, our natural state when we are not holding ourselves back through all the mislearnings we have, the misprogramming traumas, including the first breath, uh, uh, breath at birth. So we, we breathe into the chest, and the chest needs to be moving. The numbers that does not be aware, breathe into the chest, breathe fully. Fully means you, if you try to breathe fully through your nose, it's very difficult. Also, if you if you're jogging or laughing or having an emotion, it's always through the mouth. It's a bigger orifice. It's it's naturally yes. That is what happens when we get out of the way. We will start to breathe through the mouth. And if we want to hold hold our horses, then you know we sit around with our mouths closed. Mm-hmm. But then we're not so engaged with life. So breathing fully means that the we have a, a, something called a, uh, I call a breathing security system. It is always trying to use up all the energy slash spirit that we take in. So if I breathe more, then it will make me move more or think more to use up that energy. Mm-hmm. The, the, the job of the breathing security system is to leave us with not any extra energy after each inhale exhale so so if i when i breathe fully i want to breathe beyond what feels comfortable because i'm inclined to breathe to this level that is the subventilating when i don't retain extra energy so our job is to break that and breathe more than we usually do and you can actually feel it in your own breath so you breathe a little bit more than you usually do, and, and uh, then you, you will have taken in more energy. So that's number three. Number four is continuous breathing. For example, if you're jogging, you're, 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 it's, it's a continuous breathing. Even when you have emotions, it's continuous breathing. <coughs> when you do uh, uh, yawning, it's only one breath. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that doesn't bring it to result, even though the, the breath, when you do it, the yawning, is perfect. Mm-hmm. And the breath you do when you're jogging is perfect. That's natural breathing. But number five, breathing basic number five, is we have to surrender and let go. And the way we don't do that is by moving our body or moving our thinking. Thinking, thinking really consumes a lot of energy. So in jogging, it's perfect bre- natural breathing, but we are not still. So we use up all the energy. If you're a good meditator, the breathing security system will, uh, will uh, suppress your breathing. So you're, you're meditating really well, you're calm, and you use up almost no energy, but then you're not allowed to take in any energy either, because if you do, you will open up your you set up to a new territory. So if you have people who do some meditation, you can know that your breathing uh, slows down or becomes almost <laughs> that we can't see it. So our job is to, to retain more energy than we use up. The being aware and breathing in, into the chest, breathing fully and continuously, that's all taking in energy, and that's great then we need to learn to not use it up if we want to go to the deep, deep levels of, of the 
of our core of who it truly are. So uh, lying still, not thinking, just being aware, then suddenly we have more energy in our bodies. And where will that energy go? It will go to places where it hasn't been before, and we start to have experiences. <coughs> Even in a 20 seconds uh, uh, breathing like this, I can show it, uh, it you get uh, it's a huge experience. That's why I really recommend, do uh, not almost uh, demand, do not do this on your own because things will happen and you cannot even uh, believe it. So you can do 20 seconds, but as soon as you start to get a little tingling in your body or some energy, stop. Because if you don't stop uh, if, and you don't know what's going on, you'll be could be freaked out. You're like, oh my God, I didn't know. Because it's, it's really unbelievably powerful. So the way the breath would look like, I'm, I'm becoming aware of experiencing my body, and then I'm going to open my mouth and, and take the breath in through the mouth and lead it to my upper chest and make that really move up here and, uh, and do that in a continuous manner, like jogging, for let's say 20 breaths. So can I do that now? Okay. And you can follow if you like. Sure. Don't be surprised if you will have some experiences, okay? okay? <laughs> Get your breath all the way up to the collarbone. And then just let it go. And just observe what you experience on the inside. Yep. Maybe you feel like fresh, cold, warm. Yeah, I feel warm and I feel a little bit like headachey, almost like my head is spinning. So yeah, it feels it feels it's intense. Spinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that was only what fifteen seconds. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good. Okay. If you do that for an hour, uh, a lot of things will go. And uh, the problem in uh, normal society is, and the normal way we have been programmed is that when we start to feel these things that you just felt now, and myself too, in one way you can say I feel really uh, awakened. I feel, I feel more. Yes. I feel yes. more than before. Well, w what the breathing security system, the homeostasis, the, the thing that doesn't want us to change, it says that that is a bad experience. Mm -hmm. it, it, we should get not go that. Look, you had some experience that don't do it. Don't do it. it. And, and it. so we are constantly living in a subventilating state with uh, uh, the information, unconscious information from the breathing security system that this makes you safe. Look, you do, everything is normal the way it is. Right? You know you can survive the way you are right now. But it doesn't tell you that if you keep subventilating like that over time, you're going to get sick and old and, and your cells don't have enough oxygen. Got it. I didn't tell you that. So actually it is really uh, harmful. And in, in a lot of health uh, practitioners today know for sure that uh, lo most sickness, sicknesses cannot survive in an oxygenated uh, environment. Got it, got it. The more so we get like the a, it's like a healing rejuvenation. Yes, yes. So that's why people yeah. come to you. So, so tell us a little more, like, what are your clients like? How do they hear about you? Who, you, you're in Costa Rica? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm here now. We've been here now, here four years. Life took us here, but we still travel around and do workshops. Right now, <laughs> we are the talk of the town, <laughs> kind yeah. of. We have uh, uh, lots of workshops here, and uh, I don't know, my life just has shown up like that. I had a practice, a thriving practice in Stockholm, one in New York City, one in Connecticut, Boston, Maryland, Florida, and now down here. So it seems like where I go, it, it uh, magnetized that. 
and we don't do uh, it's word of mouth mostly uh, how people get now that there i I'll, I'll, um my my preference is to work on with people who are really interested in not just getting rid of the pain even though this work will get rid of pains and all that uh, uh, quickly. Now, my, my, my passion is more, yes, of course we're going to feel fantastic, get rid of the pain, be more alive, be more excited, be more, be more not crazy, but like alive mm-hmm. and, and enjoying our life. But that comes with an understanding of what is life? Who are we? What is going on here? How did I get here? Yeah, well, my mother birthed me. But how did I become a being? How come I can experience? So this is where my passion lies, and not the Tibetan aspects are. So when people come, uh, it becomes a, a, um, a more, um, more a, a permanent um, um, optimum living. How, how can we live? How can we live if we don't have any issues? Because the breath, natural breath, cleans out the subconsciousness, what do we got left? Well, we got left to who we really are. And that is not death. That is more aliveness. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to be a contribution to the world. And it, it, what's your hobby? Well, that's probably what you're going to be contributing to the world with and, and get paid if you want to. Uh, so uh, it, it's more taking it into meaningful life. Not just, okay, I want to get rid of my little problem. No, your problem is actually your gift. Your problem is a gift to wake up. And there are two ways that spirit educates us. One, we have an inner inclination to uh, find out more about life. And and we are consciously choosing to uh, embark on Try out the breathing. Try out all kinds of spirit. We're searching for workshops. We're searching for practitioners, for th- places where we can uh, learn this. That's the easy way. And it's like it's, we don't. If we don't do that, unfortunately, universe will force us to it. Yeah. Okay. So you think everything is gonna stay the same? There is, you know, everything is good now. Just let me watch my TV. No, it's okay. No, nothing stays the same. So if we don't do it voluntary, we get into a car accident, bankruptcy, divorce, sickness. Something will happen where we can not hold on to to uh, uh, die slowly without noticing. Yes, so, it's like facing ourselves and everything that ha- everything that lives in our body. It's it's easier. That's the easy way to do it. Yes, <laughs> voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> so tell yeah. us. So 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 that's where creative questions is another I yes. guess, thing that you created. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So so the breath, uh, natural breathing, cleans up. But then we have habitual programs from the past. Everything we do is a program. So even though we clean up, we will revert back to uh, living our old way if we do not use the second uh, uh, pillar of unlimited breath, of rebirthing too. Uh, um, the second pillar is our thinking. Our th- what I look at, I will see. If I'm, I'm, look, I'm seeing my cup here. Well, I see it. Well, the reason I see it is because I'm looking at it. Yes. So if, I'm, if I see it, I know I'm looking at it. And what most people do, they... You know, I, I don't want that. Why well, are you looking at it? You yes. take more of it. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that in the other way. If I, if I could only get rid of this, well, the only way you can get rid of that is by not looking at it. Yes. Right? <laughs> so so it, it's, uh, the, the education we have, uh, or we have had in the past anyway, is, has a lot of faults in it. It's a lot of mistakes uh, that we believe to be true, and uh, the the most m- most people have heard of you know good thinking is a good thing, and uh, affirmation is wonderful, and it is, and is, but according to me, that in my opinion it was a, a stepping stone mm-hmm. to go from affirmations to realize 
creative questions. Our whole life, it's our, it's our holy grail. What is a holy grail? Is to realize that mind thrives on questions. And mind must answer questions. And unfortunately, we go and start our car. It's not starting. We go, why isn't my car starting? But the next day when the car is starting, we don't say, why is my car starting? Right? So why isn't my car? Is it like a CNN kind of mind? The, the trouble. Why is it? Yeah, we seem to ask the negative questions like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get? Yeah, it's like. The, and what are we going to get? Yes. We get answers. Right? Well, what's wrong with you? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you go to your doctor, 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 please tell me what's wrong with me. And he, he has to have to answer. He doesn't want to answer, but he has to because you ask him. Yes. Right? So, so we want to learn to, um, that, to, to learn to do good questioning because quest, mind must answer. And if, if that, because of that, everything that has been proven has been disproven by someone else. Everything that has been disproven has been proven by someone else because they have different questions. When we get... Hmm. It's bad today. Well, blah, blah, blah. Why is the weather so good today? You know, so it, depending on where you come from, you will have um, a, a different response. And the good thing with the, so the thinking process has two parts, questions and answers. Nobody knows that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. No, you're not thinking. What, which part of the thinking are you doing now? Are you asking questions or answering them? So I, I'm kind of thrilled about that, that the thinking is not just thinking. It has two parts to it. And the creative space is in the first part, which is called questions. So if you want change, you need to ask a new question. You need to ask questions. And the other state is statements. It's matter of fact. It's already manifested. This is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Can I give you a comment? No. Here, I, I just told you the fact. Got it's it. a fact. A statement. So can, it's can you give us an example of somebody that where how the creative questions would work? So say there's yeah. a certain way. Let's say uh, uh, I want to be more successful at my work. Okay. okay so, so, uh, or, uh, so what's going on in your work? Well, my boss is uh, is not treating me right. Okay. So uh, that is a statement. My boss isn't treating me right. Well, if you look a little deeper, you are asking yourself, why isn't my boss treating me right? Well, your mind must answer. And you ask yourself that maybe even only one time. But you ask a question one time, you get thousands of affirmations <laughs> or, or answers. Yes. It's, when you realize you're getting what you don't want, you realize the question you have been asking, why isn't my boss uh, treating me right? And then you consciously choose and turn that around to, why, why is my boss treating me right? Well, uh, that's a good question. But maybe I cannot fathom it because, no, look, he's not. And it's like, okay, why, would, why could your boss treat you right? Now the mind can accept it. Yeah, well, they could. It's not true, but he could. Yeah. But, uh, the, uh, so he could because I'm a good worker. Because um, he's actually a really nice guy. Or he, he, has, he could because he wants me to be even better. Uh, and on and on and on the answers come. But, but the problem that we can fall into is to dwell on the answers. Uh, why is my boss treating me right? Because I'm so good. Because I, I, I come early to work every day. Now I have to come early to work. I was late today. Oh, now he's not going to treat me. So we have to, to, uh, um, I, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So, so okay, yeah. well, that's, yeah. A asking why, why is my boss treat, uh, why could my boss treat me right? Yes. And then go, oh, yeah, so, and then go back to the question. The question is where the juice, the energies, the, the transformation, you know, the law of attraction? Yes. 
obviously most people do, it's wonderful. And it, 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 it's the, the truth. That's how you, you, you mirror. You, the, the, the world reflects you in our vibration. Yes. So, so we, we, the way we vibrate is the way the world vibrates back to us. If I smile at someone, they will smile back to me. If I start a fight, they will start a fight back to me. So finding a, um, uh, the vibration that we want to have, the goal I want to have, I want to have a new car. I want to have a Range Rover, okay? Now I need to start to vibrate in that. And the, how do I do that? Well, in the old, uh, that I learned, and probably you too, for years and years, go and test drive the car. Uh, tell yourself, I now have my ideal right Range Rover. And, and bombard yourself and, and, and pro program yourself. But if you could, uh, the, to change, that doesn't change the vibration. It just changed, uh, unless you can unconsciously get in contact with, if you ask a question. That is how you change your vibration. How do I feel when I drive my own Range Rover, how do I feel? How do I feel when I, why can I have a Range Rover? Well, there are lots of them around, even down here in Costa Rica, believe it or not. <laughs> why, why can, why could I have, uh, why can I have my own Range Rover? And, and uh, before the answer comes is when the important part are. But that is when the uh, vibration changes. So why can I have my Range Rover? Because I deserve one. No, no uh, change of vibration happened there because I went straight to a statement. The statements are dead. But if I can discipline myself and sitting in the question and, and give that all the energy, why can I own my own? How do I feel when I own my own uh, Range Rover? How do I feel? You bathe yourself in that. You savor it. Mm. How would I? How would I feel if I had my own Range Rover? And now my vibrations start to change. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part because once the vibration changes, then the manifestation, manifestations show up. So how do we change our vibration? By creative questions. By questions. But creative questions are specific questions. Um, good questions. They are favorable questions. They have the answer built in to the question. There is only one way you can answer the question. What, uh, do you have, Arne, do you have your, uh, your own Range Rover? Yes, no. You know, so it can go either way with that. But why, could, why can you have your own Range Rover? <gasps> oh, I didn't know I could. Oh. And, and when we get into topics that are heavy for us, we want to fight it. That's a stupid question. Why? You no, know, the ego comes in because it doesn't want to let go of the old question. Yeah. I cannot have. I don't deserve. I don't this and that. You know, so disciplining us to stay with the question is the key to change the vibration and therefore uh, what we have in with our lives. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Like shifting the subconscious mind, which I do in, with hypnosis yeah. as well. So I love uh -huh. how you combine right. the, right. the breath work, the body work with questioning. Uh, so, so for those that are interested in doing, finding out more about your work, uh, mm -hmm. where can they find you? Uh, they can go to unlimitedbreath.com mm -hmm. or, or uh, Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash unlimitedbreath. Wonderful. Un Unlimited breath. Unlimited breath. Cool. And I'll post yeah. some links. Um, great. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share in closing? I think that was pretty much a, in a nutshell. There, there are two parts. The natural breathing, which I love, that it's natural. It's not something Arnie came up with. Yes. You know, it's something that happens to everyone all the time. So, and, and we can actually use that. The biggest gift we got as being beings We've got that gift to honor that. Thank you. And that has all, all the keys into it already. We don't have to, you know, the mind says, well, I can, I can do better than God. I can do better than 
the source energy, the fountain of life. I can do better than the fountain of life because I, I, I'm smarter than the thing that can have these trillions of cells and all these things, all the whole universe to work all together. I can do better than that. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> you know? So back off and maybe study what, what, what were we given with. Yes. So, so I'm really happy about the breathing there and with the creative questions. Now we can actually be getting the driver's seats of our life by, by, choose, by, by, uh, repro that's a real reprogram. You cannot have why am I not happy and why am I happy at the same time? So if yeah. like, I'm so depressed, well, you're probably asking yourself, why am I so depressed? Well, can I change that? Why am I so, so excited? Now, if you, Stick with that question for a little bit. The other one will disappear. But if you just tell yourself, I'm, I'm or like, if it's a big, if it's too big of a stretch to go from, uh -huh. if you're actually feeling depressed, and then you're saying, "Why well, yeah. I'm excited," but you're really not excited. What would be the middle answer? Would be, "How could I feel better?" You could or would. Yes. yes. Okay. Because I think it's important. Because sometimes when you know, there's this whole yeah. thing you're denying your true feelings. So yeah. You, Absolutely. You with the yeah. questioning. Yes. You, 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 if, if it's too big a stretch, you put in the word would or could. Yes. And the mind, it works the same for the mind. Yes. It, it will still go and find answers for that. So, like that, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, why do I have a million dollars in my pocket? You liar. You don't have a million dollars in your pocket. How could I have a million dollars? How could I have? Why could I have? Well, I could. I mean, <laughs> I literally could. I could have a check, you know, or whatever. It could come from, I don't know. So it, it opens up the vibration. That's the key. Not the, the answers are the booby prize. Oh, I got it. No. If you got it, you lost it. Yeah. Because the creative power is in the question. Got we it. access life force. We act, we, 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 uh, we, uh, take the life force and, and make it look in a certain way by questions, not by statements. Statements are blinding. Uh, uh, this is how it is. Can I give you some idea about that? No. This is it. There's no more to it. I got the answer, and nothing else is is interesting or invited to challenge that answer. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a statement. Okay, you can never win with statements. People will debate and debate and debate, and there will be no winner. Un unless one of the persons changes their question. Got it. Good. Great. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Arne. This has been wonderful, and good luck to you, and thank you for, you know, sharing about your work. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Yeah. We'll thank you, everyone. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye.